Good morning, this is Joe Hoyle at the University of Richmond, and we're doing a chapter today on long-term debt financing. Companies simply have to borrow lots of money at times if they're going to grow and prosper. In this case, your uncle who owns an office supply company wants to make a major expansion. He needs $10 million to grow his business. How do you go about getting $10 million? Well, obviously, you can go to a bank, or maybe two or three banks in this case, and borrow the money, but he has decided to sell bonds. A bond is a contract, often in denominations of like $1,000, that you sell to people. Why would he go and try to sell bonds instead of borrowing the money from the bank? One of the reasons is that he may be able to get a lower interest rate. If you go to a bank and borrow a couple of million dollars, there's a lot of risk there. And to be able to afford to have that risk, the bank may have to charge you a fairly high rate of interest. However, if your uncle sells bonds to a whole lot of people in thousand dollar denominations, no one investor is risking a tremendous amount of money. You're spreading the risk around. And any time you can spread risk around, typically that means that you can charge or get a lower interest rate. So your uncle may believe that he can save money by selling bonds instead of simply going to a bank or two or three banks and borrowing the money that way. His financial advisor has come to him and said, well, there's lots of different types of bonds. There's zero coupon bonds, there are term bonds, and there are serial bonds. And this has worried your uncle, who isn't exactly sure of which type of bond he might prefer and what the real differences are. So let's look at all three of these. As we said earlier in the semester, a lot of accounting is understanding terminology. Here's three terms, zero coupon bond, term bond, serial bond. Business people know what these mean, and you should too. A zero coupon bond is one that pays no cash interest at all. You sell the bond and you promise to pay a certain amount of money at some time in the future. And you pay nothing in between. Now the advantage of that is it's a very easy set of transactions. You sell the bond, you wait a year or two or three, and then you pay the bond off and you only basically have two transactions. The issuance of the bond to begin with and the payment of the bond at the very end. Now your first question might be, why would anybody buy a bond that doesn't pay any cash interest? Zero coupon bonds are bought at a very deep discount. So a $10 million bond, for example, if it was a zero coupon bond, might be issued for only $6 million. So the interest is built in when you pay back the entire face value. You borrow $6 million, five or six years later you pay $10 million, and the difference between those two figures is the interest that the person owns. So therefore, when you're talking about a zero coupon bond, one of the first things you think about is it's sold at a discount, and it's very easy because there's only two transactions, the issuance at the beginning and the payoff at the end. A term bond does pay interest. You pay interest every period. So if it's a term bond that pays interest quarterly or semi-annually or annually, those payments have to be made. So you have to write checks once or twice or four times per year. And then at the end of the term, you pay the entire face amount. So in this case, if you borrowed $10 million on term bonds, you'd pay interest, interest, interest all along, and then you'd pay the entire $10 million at the end. Now, one of the advantages is that you're gonna sell that either at face value or very close to face value. So if you sell $10 million worth of, of term bonds, you can expect to get roughly $10 million. The problem is kind of twofold. One, you have to put the trouble to make those interest payments every period of time. And because this is a debt contract, you can't miss a payment. So you have to pay them 
when they're due, you have to make sure the checks are out there and the payments are made. And then at the end, at the end of the term, you have to pay the entire face amount. And a lot of companies have trouble coming up with $10 million. Now you may go out and refinance and borrow other money, but in some way, when the face value comes due, you have to pay that entire $10 million figure. So a term bond has regular interest payments and then a large, sometimes called a balloon payment at the end. A serial bond is a little bit different. In a serial bond, you pay the interest every so often, every quarter, every six months, every year, but at the same time, you also pay part of the principal. For example, if your parents have a home loan, that's most likely a serial note or a serial bond because every time they make a payment, they're paying both interest and principal. So at the end, there's no large payment because by the time you get to the end, you have paid the $10 million almost completely off. So you don't have to worry about that large balloon payment at the end if it's a serial bond. The problem, of course, is you don't get to keep the money as long because you're having to pay it off every time you make a payment. And a lot of times people borrow money because they want the money. They want to hold the money as long as they can because they're going to use that money to make other money. They're going to use that money because of the financial leverage. They're going to use that money so they can make profits of their own. But your uncle has to make a decision. Your uncle has to decide, should I issue serial bonds, term bonds, or zero coupon bonds? a very, very typical problem for a business person who wants to expand. My name is Joe Hoyle. I'm on the faculty here at the University of Richmond. Study hard, learn it all. Have a great day.